I'm a musician, I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want and, you know, buckle up. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Greg, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, Alex, that's my pleasure. I'm happy that, you know, I, I'm, since I just found out about this, I, I look <laughs> so amazing put you together. Look you look wonderful. <laughs> yes, exactly. I feel cleaner just looking at you. Oh, good, dude. If you could smell me, I'm very pleased with myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's been some exciting times, not just for you guys, but, you know, we've seen very recently, like, like a string of like, I'm going to say career highlight albums of, of bands like Obscura, Archpire, yeah. Mull. Like, now you guys are coming out with an album that I know you're very excited and very proud about. Um, yeah. th we're going through like a golden age of technical and proggy death metal. Um, that must be pretty, I, I, you, I know that this is far from your first rodeo like you've you've you know uh have more than a little bit of experience but seeing how this is this wave that's going on right now that must be exciting to be right in the middle of that yeah i mean it's good for it's good for everyone right mm -hmm. the scene is great and then if if people keep pumping out killer records then uh you know that's better for everybody so yeah, yeah, you yeah. know listeners so yeah no it's really cool man I had a chance to listen to the full album already uh, that that's coming our way there are some as we would expect from a band like you guys but there are some surprises in there and there but specifically you know some more melodic and at times dare i say for a death metal band more accessible elements to the music as well um you're you're nodding do you agree with that is that an evolution of the band that you guys are thinking about yeah you know i mean looking for where we started um you know when when we when i joined the band like in 2006 or 7 uh we weren't even called the legion back then but it was yeah. very much you know when we were a local band it was very much in the style of arch enemy and nevermore right and then so it, it was that kind of you know melodic kind of metal you know death metal you know and i came in being very much uh i love the gothenburg scene yeah yeah and, you know, and, and being like a prog kid, you know, thrash and prog kid. So the the evolution of the band is slowly, I mean, it's it's natural in a way that it's like, oh yeah, these are kind of the, you know, the genres that we want, but then the lineup changes have had a lot to do with For the sure. evolution of our sound. Like it yeah. just, it's, and then what talents come in the band. So, you know, lineup changes are horrible especially for the audience, right? Like the, the fans hate him. And uh, I'll tell you, the people in the band don't like him, any, you know, it's like worse for us. But the, you know, if taking negatives and turning them into positives is, you know, something that I think all metal bands kind of should do because it's a hard life. You have to kind of like roll with this and just go, I have the opportunity to go out there and search go. for a new friend. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> so yeah so like through that process it's it's been a continuous like you know let's get a guy that's like you know who's, who's a better musician or like you know just a better person that we can like vibe with you know so it's it's not gonna be such a you know it's it's really hard being in a band that opportunity i'm gonna i'm gonna phrase it as an opportunity um, has really led to some amazing guys being in the band, which we arrives where we are today, six full albums later, um, that everybody, I, you know, I'm very fortunate to, to be in a band with such talent, talented yeah, yeah, guys. For sure. Um, so their skill set leads to different things that we can do. And, you know, and I'm a musician first and foremost. Like I love death metal and everything, and, but uh, you know I, I like to play. I like I love jazz. I love classical. I want to do, you know, all this other stuff. And you know it's gonna it works its way in. Yeah. So yeah. 
you know, experimenting is just part of part of the growth. And you know, some people can't hang, and that's cool. And then you know, you get other people, and that's cooler. <laughs> you guys are a band that are embracing trying new things and what have you is there something that for you would be is there anything off the table for a legion is it like you know we can do anything or do you within that you know uh creative world that you guys have built do you still have some boundaries where you say like you know this is we can't go past that you know it, it's kind of it's kind of one of these things where we've existed in both both worlds too because i mean like Hey, we covered yes, and we, you know, and we did rush and mm -hmm. for death metal plan, and then we just didn't do them death metal. Like yeah. we're like, hey, we're gonna do it more prog rock, prog metal, you know. So there has been that spirit. Like I'm like, I'm gonna do a Bach piano concerto, you know. Like yeah. there has been that that kind of like spirit of like, I'm a musician, I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want, and you know, buckle up because let's let's go. Um, but the you know and. I, I think that when I was talking earlier about some influences that have come in, not all the influences that across the board go with every member. And right. so there is this things where, you know, some some directions I don't want to go down personally. Okay. Um, but some of the other guys do. And and it's that kind of like creating budding of heads that kind of like is magical. You know right. what I mean? And I think it's it sucks to be <laughs> in it but for the listener i think it can and really uh create you know some unique things for people i think one of you know contender for song of the album for me like uh, called home i thought it was an extremely powerful song um, not just, you know, from the music, but also the lyrics and how they really work well. Um, there's a lot in, in, not just in that song, but if we then, because I think it's a good representation for the album because it touches on so many different elements. Um, l there are so many themes on this album that are coming and, and it sounds like a lot of people, either it was one extremely schizophrenic person writing every lyric or there's was a lot of influence from a lot of emotions that everybody went through. What are some of those key stories or key themes that you want to address with this album? Um, you know, we made the conscious decision after we did Apoptosis that, because we weren't 100% happy with the record. Um, you know, we felt very rushed and, and, you know, sometimes I think we felt our performances were like, because of being rushed, we didn't have enough time to really nitpick ourselves and gotcha. like we kind of had to go and um so because of that we kind of made the decision uh I, I remember i was on the phone with riley and you know i was like you know if it's going to be a better performance to not sing about science because of the emotional you know if you if like you can deliver a better performance when you're more emotionally attached to the subject right, right. because like before riley joined we were very like invested in science and like mm -hmm. emotionally invested and then that's just not where his head was at you know and like he you know conformed and you know he's like we, you know, keep up the status quo this is what the fans expect and then at some point we kind of you know i you know i think we all felt that maybe that wasn't the right thing for him as an artist so i would much rather you know give a better performance by having him be super invested in everything he's right. talking about. And like, that that's just a personal thing. It's like, you know, I can sit and talk about science and be super invested and, you know, like just enthralled with it. But that's not really, that's not where his head's at right now. So, right. you know, we made that decision uh, to just sing, like, I don't know, to, we, I guess we didn't really pinpoint on how we wanted to go, but we kind of made that decision, you know, that, you know, for the sake of, you know, better conveying our music that we should maybe, you know, alter kind yeah, of yeah, directions yeah. a little bit lyrically. And we also kind of felt maybe we ostracized a good portion of the metal community too. It's like, you know, if, if our singer is not that, you know, invest this, yeah. the, you know, I can't, 
you know, the wide, <laughs> you know, the, the metal community at large, we may be like kind of just like ignoring a lot of a, a lot of them. And uh, that was not a very good business move on our part. So we, we thought multiple reasons why we did it. And then I think also um, to another point to your question, when COVID hit, it seemed very tone deaf to talk about. So, I mean, we could have, but it kind of felt like science is, it, you can turn on television or go on the net without it kind of being in your face. And I think we're just kind of, I mean, we're all over it at this point. Like the last thing we want to talk about is just the science of, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And that, that an unfortunate side effect of just the times we live in, but it, we, you know, it, it was, that was the other kind of like nail in the coffin for that. It doesn't mean we won't ever do it. It just means yeah, yeah. like we kind of needed to do something different for a sec. The theme of the record, you know, the title "Damn Them," uh, like Latin, it's Latin for loss, mm -hmm. and we just like everybody lost something, you know, during this time. Like you either lost your job, you lost loved ones, you lost, you know, friends because yeah. of political divisiveness. It just like this, it, everybody lost something. Even yeah. if you did not, you didn't lose any of that. You lost two years of your life sitting in your home, you know. Yeah, so yeah, sure. it, it just seems super appropriate and then um like called home that you know the the music are myself my best friend uh committed suicide while i was trapped i, I got trapped in canada when the borders closed um uh, with with my now wife um but uh yeah he he was stuck by himself in the house and he couldn't you know he couldn't handle it and he, he did that and that was extremely hard for me and then that's the music came out of that and then um about like a week after that riley's good friend killed himself exact same way and then after that our, our bassist father-in-law uh died really suddenly and it was just like bam 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 like hit after hit after hit and like so we were kind of like a raw nerve and that influenced the record a lot like yeah. we, we were kind of in a very vulnerable place i would think more emotionally and you know i think one thing that i you know people need to understand is like when you're going through something like that sometimes your creative output's not gonna be the same i know i've i've seen a little bit of backlash from like some old time fans i'm like you gotta understand <laughs> like what's been going on um fortunately i think they're in the vast minority but you know um it's it's a very good statement of where we are. You know, the lyrical content in Called Home, um, like the, the title and a lot of the lines in there were like out of my friend's suicide note, you know? Oh, wow. So like it, that song is extremely difficult to listen to. <laughs> And it it's uh, you know we we are kind of campaigning and trying to do stuff for suicide awareness and all that, um, and uh, yeah, I mean so, so there's, I mean that is going to take a big portion of why the album is different just because of yeah. the state of the band, and then I also um, because of everything being shut down and we had more time, um, we did new things so we all got in a room and wrote together yeah you know and that has never happened in this band we have never done that um it's always been i write the music um or mike writes the music you know i write the lyrics or you know riley writes the lyrics and, and there you go you come in you you learn the tune you put your solo on it or you write your bass part or you know you listen to the drums and then you just write your own fills. There you have it. That, that's the song. And this was none of that. This was, we went through every song with a fine tooth comb um, and did the creative melee <laughs> of like, you know, 
forcing it and there's that's where like a lot of the influences came in and yeah. uh some of it was extremely painful you know when you're in the creative element with like four other dudes like you know that, that's my baby don't touch my baby yeah and i like to going back to preschool and like learning how to share <laughs> again, right like yeah, 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 yeah. i can time out he, he can't he can't share to, uh, <laughs> um but you know so yeah, yeah. you know this awesome. so there was it was it was an incredible experience and one of learning and um you know a very honest record if there yeah. was one I, I was no, I, first of all, I just want to say thank you for sharing that. Uh, oh, yeah. because that's I, that's very personal, and I and I, I I genuinely want to say thank you for that. Um, you guys are a very genuine band. Like what you do, you take very seriously, and you know it's it's not it's never a gimmick. Like the science piece was never a gimmick, um, and when you cover a, a song like roundabout uh, that's also not meant in any gimmicky way do you guys also did um you 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 were heavily inspired for you know first it was a b-side then you made you know a video for it but the in flanders fields poem uh oh, that you made yeah. uh you know a, an acoustic guitar song for In Flanders Fields, was, it, it was actually, we were on tour in Canada. And uh, we're not, in the U.S., our, our school system doesn't really talk a lot about World War One. Like, I feel like my knowledge of World War One was very um, remedial. Like, yeah. I, I didn't really have a, a firm grasp on it. I knew about the trench warfare and, like, the chemicals and, and stuff like that. But the whole, like, you know, assassination kicking it off and the allies. And I was like, I'm still not 100% on all yeah. the details. Right, where it's like World War II, you had such a, you know, a bad guy. <laughs> you know, it's easier to kind of grasp. It's and, a different kind of, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, yeah, it's a different kind of a thing. So, uh, so just being that, and then we were on tour, and uh, the night I met my wife, we were like hanging out, and and I don't even know how there was the discussion going uh, around this little circle about like what you know what it meant to be canadian and then she just recited the poem and i was like oh man that's cool like i you know that's she had that's how she identified with being canadian was through this poem that like everybody in canada knew mm -hmm. i had and i oh i remember how it came up because i was like what's up with the poppy right that everybody's wearing what what's that for because we didn't have that in the u.s and uh and then explained it and i love the poem i was like oh man that's so cool and then i had toyed i had like parts of that piece. But then when I had that kind of poem to base it off, it all came together and solidified. And then, you know, we don't have poppies in Colorado, so <laughs> to find <laughs> some field <laughs> out in the mountains that even resembled something, I don't know. <laughs> No mountains in, in, in Flanders, I'm afraid. Or the, 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 a lot of people I the, saw that the, in the comments. I'm like, I'm just doing my best. I don't have the budget <laughs> to fly to Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, we're quickly running out of time and there's a million things that I would love to ask you still. Um, I just, instead of asking a question about it, I'm just going to say thank you for the Yes cover because I really love it because my my favorite Yes songs were always the early ones. And yeah. I kind of, Roundabout is such a classic, but it's lacking a little bit that punch that a Yours Is No Disgrace has or something like that. <laughs> so I really love the little bit more, you know, amped up version. Okay. But let's focus a little bit again uh, to wrap us up on, you know, where we are right now and what's coming next. Um, you know, every, Every state is different. Every country is different right now when it comes to what's possible. But yeah. we're obviously eagerly awaiting, you know, everybody discovering this album. But what can you share already that the viewers should know about uh, what you guys are planning uh, for the next few months? Uh, you know, well, we, we leave in uh, in a little over a week for the Omnium Gatherum tour in the North America. 
And that'll be fun because it's like a mellow death tour. So that's a huge part of our sound. So I'm very excited because we've never had the opportunity to do that. Um, uh, and it'll be our first time playing live with Jeff. So, you know, people will get to see what a madman he is, uh, <laughs> the first person. And we get to shake off some cobwebs of not playing live for a couple of years. Uh, yeah, so. yeah. I'm a little I'm a little terrified. <laughs> It'll be fine by the time we hit like show three. <laughs> but the first two shows, I'm gonna be like, oh god, do I remember how to do this? <laughs> We're gonna do a headliner in June here in the States. Um, and it's it's being solidified, so that should be announced pretty soon here. Um, We'll have two more mu music videos that are in the can. They should drop for Vermin and Called Home, actually. They should oh, drop. Wow. Uh, Vermin will drop the day that the album gets released, and then Called Home will drop. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was originally going to be in the middle of Omnium, but it may. we may hold off and do it to promote the June tour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and then uh, later, we're going uh, uh, this winter. Going back to Europe with uh, our Rivers and Nile and Archspire friends and Black Crown Initiate and uh, To the Grave. To the Grave, I think. I can't read their logo. Uh, <laughs> so, a band from Australia that I hear is amazing. Uh, there so, you go. looking forward to it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's going to be quite a blast. Uh, some great packages that you guys are working on. So exciting stuff. And I hope that it will be possible for everybody to travel all over the place to come see those uh, yes. packages, uh, uh, no matter where they live or where the tours are happening. Um, Greg, um, I want to just say thank you for your time today. Um, I had a lot of fun talking to you. And like I said, I think there's a million more things that we could talk about. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you maybe after your tour uh, with Omnium and then see you uh, everything that's going on and talk a little bit more about everything that's going on but well, awesome, at this man. point no, thank you so much for your time i really appreciate oh, it oh you're welcome man i'll talk to you <laughs> bye you are awesome for watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel